Hello, welcome to the Monday, March 28th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. As a follow-up to one of Brad's uh, diaries, Xavier uh, posted analysis of XLSB files. Uh, This extension showed up in a QuarkBot infection that uh, Brad looked at, and Xavier explains a little bit how to analyze these files and uh, why NetHacker may choose to use an XLSB file. Usual modern office documents are essentially compressed XML files, but there is an option and that's what the B or binary in XLSB stands for to use a binary format. And that's exactly what happened here. Of course, once you have your macros in this binary format, then it gets more difficult to analyze them. Strings and uh, similar tools will no longer really yield any results. Xavier shows how sort of some of uh, DDA's tools are actually analyzing uh, these files and uh, then recommends if you want something quick and dirty to look at these files, you're probably best off just carefully, of course, opening the files in Excel and then just save the macros. Now, you don't need to enable macros in order to do this. So yes, you can do this reasonably safe, but again, you know, be careful whenever you open a known or suspected malicious file. And Datadog published a blog post showing how the recently discovered dirty pipe Linux privilege escalation vulnerability can be used to break out of unprivileged containers. Now, in particular with Kubernetes containers, they demonstrate how run C essentially can be used in order to break out. All the attacker has to do, and this is what this script released by Datadog does, is to wait wait for run C to run inside a container, then the dirty pipe exploit is used to overwrite the run C binary on the host with a malicious binary, which then of course leads to a code execution on the host. Overall, no real big surprise. In essence, a container is a lower privileged uh, process. So if I have privileged escalation and I can trigger it from inside the container, I may be able, like in this case, to break out of the container. And if you haven't patched Dirty Pipe yet, this may be an other incentive to get that done quickly. And then we got an interesting uh, vulnerability in PHP that has not been patched yet and appears to be quite easy uh, to exploit. The vulnerability is in the filter var function. Now, filter var is designed to filter variables. So it's actually sort of a security uh, function that's often used to validate a user input. And in this particular case, the problem comes up if you're trying to validate a domain name. Domain names are not that 100% straightforward uh, to uh, validate. So it's nice to have a function available that does it uh, for you. But the problem here is if uh, the value is actually being passed to the function exceeds uh, four gigabytes in size, then the data is actually never validated and the filter var function always uh, returns uh, okay, letting uh, the variable pass. And with this, of course, you could bypass uh, input validation. Now, in particular for domain name, that's often interesting because domain names are sometimes passed to, for example, functions like ping or such. So filter var may be used here to make sure it's a valid domain name and you don't end up with a command execution. Now, there is no patch available at this point uh, from PHP. Jordi, who published a blog post, states that they haven't responded yet to any of the bug reports submitted. Now, remember, an attacker needs to submit more than four gigabytes in order to trigger this vulnerability. So just limiting user input or the request size to something less than four gigabyte, which usually is a reasonable choice anyway, um, is something that uh, may prevent exploitation here. 
And then we got a vulnerability in the OpenBSD Slack D uh, daemon. Uh, now, uh, Slack D on OpenBSD is responsible for receiving a router advertisements for IPv6. And the feature is in the good old search list feature. That's a somewhat recent addition uh, to uh, router advertisements where you're able uh, to provide recursive DNS servers and uh, DNS search lists similar to what you see in DHCP messages. Well, in this case, a length field used a signed instead of an unsigned variable, which then leads to a heap overflow. OpenBSD did uh, promptly fix the vulnerability and an update uh, was published on March uh, 21st. However, a proof of concept exploit is also already available. And we got a patch for a Google Chrome. Uh, this one was released on Friday and fixes an already exploited uh, vulnerability. So double check and make sure that Google Chrome is up to date. Well, and uh, that's it uh, for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.